what's up guys welcome back or to the channel and we are here back in the monkey cave in the underground garage and yes we do have something to work on today it seems like lately we've been doing one off-roading video one fixing something video and then back and forth but hopefully we can get back to doing just off-roading for a little bit and i think this is the last thing we're gonna have to take care of for a little bit i hope <laughs> so what are we doing today? Well, you probably already know by the title of the video, it is taking care of that clicking on the Jeep. And it is on my Gladiator here, but if you guys have a JL Wrangler, uh, Rubicon or non-Rubicon, or a Gladiator, like I said, non-Rubicon or Rubicon, you could be experiencing a clicking whenever you're turning at low speeds or you're going over something uneven or you're switching directions, say you went right, and then you start doing a left turn, you hear it click and pop into place. What that really is happening, or what is really happening, is uh, your ball joints are basically tapered and they're sitting inside of a tapered shaft. And sometimes those aren't tightened enough from the factory and those will move around and click. I have already tightened mine and just like a lot of people who have already tightened theirs, I still experience a little bit of click. And I believe that it's because the ball joints are seated inside of a nylon bushing, which is inside of the actual ball joint housing. And for all I know, from the times I've taken it off-road, I've compromised that bushing because I still get a bit of click. And it's nothing crazy, it's nothing serious, it's not like the Jeep's gonna break down or my wheel's gonna fall off, but I don't wanna hear that click. Uh, like, I have a 20-something-year-old Jeep right there that I beat the crap out of every single weekend, and it doesn't click. <laughs> so I don't think my brand new $80,000 Jeep Gladiator should be clicking. So, we're gonna go and jump in there and we're actually gonna replace the ball joints today. So I got all my tools, I brought myself everything I need to take care of it, and the ball joints that I went with are the Synergy. So you can see I've got two boxes of Synergy right there, and they are the Heavy Duty HD Synergy Heavy Duty JLU, JL, and JT ball joints. So these are the non-knurled, and what knurled means when you're looking at ball joints, when you go to actually purchase your ball joints, because I didn't know at first either, is, this end over here, all right, let me actually get one out so it's easier for me to explain to you guys. So this end over here is actually what gets pressed into your actual, um, into your knuckle, or I should say into your uh, end forging in your actual Jeep. So this is what gets knurled. And knurled just means it has a bunch of like uh, cuts in it basically, more or less, that give it a little bit more grip. Now, if you go with a knurled, you can't go back to one of these. You have to always use a knurled because it actually bites in and causes like a, a little bit of a larger opening now because it bit in. So if you stick one of these in there, it might not fit in properly and it might not seat properly. So you're always gonna have to use knurled. This being a brand new Jeep, this thing hasn't even had its first oil change. It's literally sitting at, I think just under 7,000 kilometers. So I don't know what that is in miles, but it's not very much. And yeah, we're already doing the ball joints. Hopefully we won't have to do them for a while. That's why I went with something heavy duty and these have great reviews on them. So we will be throwing these in and hope that that noise goes away. So we're gonna throw these in and these are the non-knurled. These are the heavy duty Synergy and we are gonna be doing top and bottom on both sides. So I got myself four of them. It comes with everything you need, including cotter pins, the washers and zerk fittings. So let's go, let's get these ones out and let's get the new ones in. So it might look a bit intimidating at first, but honestly, it's not that bad as long as you break it all down into steps and you have a ball joint press. So not many people show this, but this is how you do this part. And it is in the instructions in the Synergy manual, but since we're doing the video, I'll show you guys. So first things first, we gotta pull this plug. There's a locking tab, which I think I'm gonna need a screwdriver for. And that's disconnected. So once you disconnect the actual motor, unclip this little wire here. There we go. That was a lot harder than it had to be. Now we gotta remove the skid plate, which is one, two, three, and four.
And then it looks like we've got another four bolts. Okay, and you will get a little bit of fluid, so just be ready for that. Okay, so it tells you to take the collar out, but I'm gonna leave my collar in, just for the simple fact that I'm just gonna have to put it right back in anyway. So we're gonna leave that in there, and now we are pretty much ready to start on doing our ball joints. Well, two socket sets and every tool you can uh, imagine later, I've got it off. Basically, you wanna beat the crap out of it right here and it will start to let everything out. You'll get the little bushing for the top or the little, well, I guess it's a bushing, not really, but kind of. Uh, so you get the bushing and then you got both of your ball joints ready to be pressed out. This I did hang, but it kind of came off. So let me hang it again. Switch? No, it's pretty much easy. <laughs> I felt it get easy. Yeah, she doesn't feel too great. Plus you can see the boot is already splitting and it is pretty damn soft. So these stock Mopar ones don't really last too long. And there is our other one. You can see this one also has some grease coming out already. And she moves pretty damn easy. So it'll be nice to get some better ones in there. Second one we gotta do by hand because I can't get the gun in there. But not a big deal. Just takes a little bit of Greasing with the old wrench and we'll get her done. So I got them both in and I greased the uh, Both ball joints However, you can see this bushing doesn't come back in exactly as it used to sit and I've tried everything I've tried the ball joint press. I've tried the hammer. I've tried everything and What I have come to the conclusion of after watching a video uh, these guys are actually tapered a little bit different So you can see this one is the factory one This one is the factory one this one is the Mopar one and you can see the tapering ends a little bit higher up on The new one the same amount that you will have right here So that is the reason for the bushing sitting out a little bit further, but it is seated oh, I'm not sure if you guys use GoPros, but when this thing gets cold, it just dies. So I had 50% battery and it just would not record. So I went upstairs, grabbed another battery, regrouped, grabbed myself a Red Bull, and now we're setting up on the driver's side. The passenger side is done. Everything is buttoned up. Everything is finished. Now this side does not have an axle disconnect, so it should be a little bit easier and we should have a quicker time doing it. So let's go, let's rip it apart, let's get it done. And let's take this thing for a test drive because I actually cannot wait to see if it makes a difference. I hope it does. I'm pretty sure it will because that's why I'm doing this. But uh, only the test drive will tell. Well, this side went a lot easier. I've got everything supported on bungees over here. You do, uh, sorry, you can disconnect your tie rod if you want. It says in the instructions you don't have to, so I figured let's not, and let's just save ourselves a step. But honestly, so far so good. And that front axle disconnect, it adds a good like 20 minutes to your job. So this side went a lot quicker. Now I'm just gonna press out these, throw in the new ones, grease them, and I think we should be good to go. Not bad. So it seats them really nice. Taking them out, there's a little bit of playing around to get it seated properly to actually get the cup to sit. But to get them back in, no problem. And 
be careful with these guys because uh, I already broke one. That's why I'm gonna have to use one of the flush mount ones because I snapped one of my regular ones. I was able to extract it and put in another one, but we're gonna have to use one of these weird flush guys. And to be honest with you, I have a hard enough time getting grease into a normal one. So this one is definitely gonna be interesting. If I can even get this guy in there. These gloves are definitely not helping. Yeah. Like you can see, the thing looks like a bolt, but it does have like a little inlet right there. So we'll see. We shall see if I can even get grease in that thing. So I cleaned everything up, threw everything back into the bed, and now we're ready to go for a spin. However, it is dark now, and we're not really gonna be able to go out and test it that well, or at least not on camera. So we'll go for a spin around the monkey cave, see if we hear any noises. I hope to God we didn't hear any noises, or we won't hear any noises. Uh, honestly, man, it's been a lot of work, so I'm just hoping that it wasn't for nothing. All right, let's do this. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm trying to see exactly what's going on and I try to keep it real with you guys on the channel. So this is our maiden voyage. Let's go. Ah, oh, I just heard a click. Let's hope that was just everything seeding itself and we won't hear another one because you never know that could be just you know we took everything apart so it could just be settling in So far, so good. I'd usually hear something by now. I still heard a click. So there is still a click. I don't know what it what it is. It's it's a lot less than before we changed it, but I honestly don't know what it is. There's still a little click there. Maybe that's just the way this thing is. I don't know. Maybe I need to change the knuckle. I honestly don't know. But it's mostly gone. Like to be honest with you guys, you would usually hear it a lot more. So I'm not too sure if that's just the normal noise of the way that the JL is and the JT is, but like you don't hear it going around corners like you used to. Some guy got a nice Bronco. You guys probably can't see it from the camera there, but uh, it's a nice big Bronco. Somebody lifted it already. But yeah, honestly, I don't think there's any noise. Like there is a click here and there, but Compared to how it was, there's one. yeah, there's one, there's another one, okay, well, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna have to dive, take a deeper dive and see maybe I have like a tie rod or something loose, so I guess we'll have to go back and take that passenger wheel off because it's coming from that side, so we'll figure that one out, but right now, I'm calling it a night because it's been a long day. That was my C clicking. So guys, looking under the Jeep, I feel like this might be the noise. So what that is that I just showed you guys is the tie rod. And what I think is happening there is 
The tie rods have like a ball joint on the end of them as well. They sit on a ball and they don't move back and forth, but they can rotate on the ball. And I believe that's exactly what we're experiencing. I think it's rotating every time we do a turn. So I will be taking the tire off and I will be taking a wrench to it and seeing if I can tighten that a little bit more. I have already tried tightening all that stuff prior, but maybe it came loose from all the times we've went off-roading, who knows? So that is the last thing I will check. If I cannot get it to go away after tightening that, then I'm gonna have to go with, it's a normal noise and it's something I just gotta live with. So yeah, but tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow I'm taking Big Bird out, so I will be doing that job on Sunday. So. Uh, if you guys want to see me go off-roading then definitely check out the next video, but tomorrow or Sunday I will be taking the wheel off and we'll see if we can get rid of that noise. If not Then it's something I guess I got to live with Well guys, I am at a loss. It is Sunday. I took everything apart again and I took a look at it. I tightened everything I could. I tightened the tie rods. I tightened these guys I tightened my steering stabilizer I checked the stabilizer link, uh, I mean the sway bar links, I checked the tie rod, I checked my dra uh, drag link, uh, like everything that's under here, um, my track bar on both sides, and I honestly think it is the ball joints. And if you listen, oh now it's not going to do it, oh here it is. It still does it. And after going off-roading yesterday, I have come to the conclusion, because I was speaking with another gentleman who has a Rubicon, a Gladiator Rubicon actually, and it is probably this aluminum knuckle here. Now in years prior, like my TJ over there, which has a cast knuckle, it's, so this is cast and this is cast. So you don't have any kind of weird reverberating noise or anything like that. So it is possible that anybody that has a Mojave who has the cast knuckle doesn't get this noise. So I'd be interested to know. If you guys do have a Mojave, let me know. But on all the Rubicons and on all the Saharas and sports and everything else, they all have these cast aluminum knuckles. And that is what's giving me that noise. Now, honestly, I'm gonna put it back together, go for another drive and see exactly what's going on. Uh, see if it's bad enough that I wanna take it into the dealer or if I'm just gonna live with it. But at this point, it's getting annoying. It really is. So uh, yeah, maybe this is something we're gonna have to live with. Maybe I'm gonna have to get myself the cast iron knuckle out of the Mojave. But uh, yeah, this isn't fun. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. So let's put this back together and I guess we'll go for another test drive. Well, after everything we've done, it's pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. So, what my theory is, is like I said, the aluminum knuckle, but also the fact that it has a tapered shaft in the aluminum knuckle, and the actual ball joint stud is tapered. And they're not perfectly exactly the same taper, so when it moves or when it does its thing, when it's in, in use, I think that it's just moving just enough in that taper that you can hear it. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but at the end of the day, 
I don't even know if this is normal or if I should leave it or if I should take it to the dealer. So yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, I will go take it for a ride on the streets just to see exactly if it changed anything or if it's the same or if it just whatever. Let's just go for a test drive, uh, test drive just to see. But honestly, guys, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss here. I might end up just taking it to the dealer, which is like the last thing that I want to do. As you guys can tell, I like to kind of do my own work. Um, yeah, not exactly a fan of taking it to the dealer because when I did take it last time, the guy said it was just a bottom ball joint, nothing big, just tighten it and it should be good to go. So I don't want to go there and then they go, yeah, it's just this or it's just that and it's something that I've already checked and they don't actually do anything further. Uh, I've read up enough on the forums to know that people have taken theirs to the dealer and they've done everything from changing the knuckles, changing the entire axle, changing the ball joints, changing the stabilizer, everything under the damn sun that you can think of in the front end, they've replaced. And it made no difference. <laughs> Some people say, oh, it's great, it worked. Yeah, it's great for a bit. Like when I tightened my ball joints the first time when I made that video for you guys, I tightened it, the noise went away. It was great for like maybe a week and then it just went back to normal. And as you guys can see, like, I don't have larger tires. Those are stock tires, those are 33s. I don't have a lift, I don't have anything done to it. It's perfectly stock and it's still making these damn noises. So yeah, I guess we're gonna have to either live with it or take it to the dealer. Uh, I think I will go for a trip to the dealer just to see what they say. So uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be tomorrow. <laughs> that's Monday, so. Looks like this is gonna drag on another day, but it is what it is. I want to get this done. Like, I don't want any noises. Whenever there's an issue with this thing, I take care of it. Whenever there's an issue with this thing, I try to take care of it. There shouldn't be a damn issue with it because it hasn't had its first oil change yet. But yeah, so incoming are the comments. Uh, oh, you shouldn't have bought that thing. I'm glad I never bought a Jeep. Oh, Jeeps are junk. New Jeeps are junk. Don't, don't buy a new Jeep. New Jeeps are shit. Sell your Jeep and buy an old fucking 80s something. I like my new Jeep. I love my new Jeep. Everything about it is great, except for that one damn thing. And if it has to keep clicking and I can't get it fixed, then it's gonna fucking click. And I'm gonna keep driving it, I'm gonna keep wheeling it and sending it because I love this damn thing. And this is the Jeep that I wanna be driving. But it's just not fun when you think something is gonna be breaking or something isn't right. So I just wanna address everything I can before I actually start taking it and start sending it off road and start rock crawling. Cause the trails open up in about a month and I wanna be out there. So we will be out there but I want to be able to take this thing out there. <laughs> so let's go, let's take this thing for another drive on the road and then let's see, hopefully we can get it solved. If not, then uh, off to the dealer we go. Okay, so not too sure exactly what's going on, but I took it for a spin around the garage because right now what is actually currently going on is they are renovating the garage. So we all got moved. So my spot is gonna be one, lower, uh, one level lower. So I'm gonna have to move both of my vehicles today. And I just went for a cruise around the, the garage just to go see like my new spot and I took the gladiator and It sounded perfect. I didn't have one noise. I went down the ramp up the ramp I went around and it was great So I don't know if it's because I haven't driven it after tightening everything and it just needed to seat itself or whatever I don't know. I'm Like I said guys, I'm going nuts here. <laughs> I'm at a loss, but uh It's okay. So let's go for a quick spin in the underground right now and let's see exactly what the hell is going on because it didn't make any noises a second ago. So, oh, hold on. Vince is here. What's up? You going for a cruise or what's up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want the camera? Don't you? So let's go and let's see because a second ago it was good. So like sawing it back and forth, doing like a, a slalom, no noise, taking a left turn right there, no noise. There was one little click right there, but if it clicks every now and then here and there, it's not as bad as it used to be. And honestly, like I said, it's the aluminum knuckle, right? Like the, you can't eliminate it 100%, but 
but at least I know now that everything is tight, everything is as it should be, nothing is loose, nothing is worn out, everything is greased, everything is how it should have been from the factory 6,000 kilometers ago. <laughs> but uh, it's good now, I guess, right? So to be honest, I don't think I'm taking it to the dealer. I think we're gonna be okay. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go downstairs real quick and let's see our new spot. It's a little tight. Click's not as loud either. It does yeah, I, th like I think that it's really, okay. It's I really honestly, clean. I think I can live with it because it feels good. So let's see. Oh, it's tight down here. They pushed you down a level? Yeah, because they're doing renovations. Where, where are you? Rather, that shit's closed. Why are they hanging shit like this? Like, fam, that's a little bit too close for my comfort. And I literally walked around the underground the other day with a measuring tape because I, I'm trying to lift this thing. And I measured, I'm like, okay, I can go up like seven inches. So we're gonna lift it six and then we're gonna put on <laughs> enough tires that it's gonna go up. You know, like I measured it out so that it's gonna be like half an inch from touching the damn ceiling. That, that wasn't the Jeep, that was a great. <laughs> I, I literally measured it so it's gonna be like half an inch from touching the damn ceiling. And then now I have to get moved down here and it kind of fucks my plans right up. Like, look at this. Like, that's maybe six inches there. So like, we can still do it, but that sign back there, I'm gonna have to... Shh. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, I just wanna get this shit done, get my Jeep lifted, and get the noises eliminated. But, let's go find this spot. I'm gonna catch up with you guys in a second because this side of the garage is a little bit brighter and this is kind of nice for working on stuff. So I hope I have it on, uh, on this side. Look at that, it almost looks like a whole different place. Hey, look at that shit. <laughs> Jeez, all right, all right. Not too, let's not get too excited because we might be on the dark side. Let's go find it, let's go find it. Okay, so here's the new spot. And it doesn't look too bad actually, like there's, Enough room that if we lift it, we'll still fit. <laughs> so uh, I can still go up my six to seven inches. And yeah, I, I made a mistake. I'm not going up, I'm not doing a six inch lift. I'm doing a four inch lift. And I'm going up another few inches because of the tires. It's gonna be around six, six and a half, maybe seven inches taller. But she fits, she fits real good. And we're not on the bright side, but the floors are a little bit cleaner and the lights are a little bit brighter than where we were before. So it's always an upgrade. So now let's go get Big Bird and let's put her in her new home. And honestly guys, this is the cleanest I have ever, ever come home from off-roading. Like it honestly does not even look like I went off-road. But we did, <laughs> we did go off-road. Uh, trust me, it was a hell of a time. Yeah, it was crazy. So. Hopefully you guys check out that video. That video will be coming out soon. But it looks like the Jeeps are in their new home. It is a little bit brighter down here. So if we have to do any work, I hope to God we don't. It shouldn't be too bad. But let's go, let's get out of here and we'll come back and take the Jeep, uh, the Gladiator for test drive. Oh, and I forgot. I also got rid of all the metal in my winch cable. So now it's just soft shackle to winch cable and all we have left is the thimble which basically is the only metal in the entire recovery point or in the entire recovery system and from here we can also attach to any other vehicle or we can throw on another strap or another one of those um, <coughs> soft shackles which you guys can see i use as handles and vince has my straps which are soaked because we've been using them yesterday so i got to dry these out and everything else inside the Jeep is soaked as well. So that's that. But let's go, let's put all this crap away and let's get on the road. I figured before we head out, I might as well just give this a quick spray and get rid of any surface rust that might happened or might have already happened from all the fresh metal that we exposed from leaving the jack and the stand. And just degrease everything so that the paint actually adheres.
So it's been two days and so far so good. Now I'm trying to keep it real with you guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be like, yeah, the, the noise is totally gone. It's not, it's not totally gone. <laughs> but from when I first initially found the noise and I first initially went to go tighten the ball joints from before I did anything, when I first tightened the ball joints, the noise went away, I'd say maybe like 70, 80%. It was gone for like a few days and then it came back in a week to about 70 or 80%. So it clicked every now and then. So at that point, before I touched it again and did the ball joints, when I was leaving my garage from my parking spot to getting to the actual road, it would click like on average, uh, I'd say about four or five times. Today, it clicked once. And yesterday, it only clicked once. So. It's not perfect. Uh, it is because we have the aluminum knuckle. It's never going to be perfect, but I can tell you it is a hell of a lot better. It honestly feels better. It honestly steers better. Maybe that's just because the ball joints are tighter. Well, obviously the ball joints are tighter. We put in brand new ball joints, uh, but it feels good. It honestly does. It doesn't feel like uh, there's anything loose. It doesn't feel like there's anything that needs to be addressed. We've checked everything. I've checked every single joint, every single bolt. Anything under the damn sun has been tightened under that damn Jeep. <laughs> so everything is tight. Everything is good. So there's nothing that I have to actually worry about. So in the back of my mind, I don't feel like, oh no, something's wrong. I honestly just feel like this is a design flaw and they shouldn't have used the aluminum knuckle. Now, Yesterday, I actually got in there and I made sure to regrease everything and to just check everything and make sure it was good. And when I was regreasing everything, I noticed that it was actually the front, uh, the right upper, so the passenger side upper ball joint that was making the noise, the one with that like bushing. And my theory is that because it has that bushing, it kind of reverberates a little bit more for whatever reason, because it's an aluminum, I don't know if it's aluminum, it should be an aluminum, aluminum bushing on an aluminum knuckle, but it could be a steel bushing for all I know, but either way. So that bushing is where my noise is coming from. It's only from one side, from one ball joint. For all I know, it's because mine got worn out a bit from having the original ball joints in there, not tight enough, and I went off-roading, and it ended up kind of just making the hole bigger and making the problem bigger. I don't know. My plan is to eventually upgrade to the cast iron knuckles. These Jeeps do actually come with cast iron knuckles. I don't know if you can get that as an option on just the regular Rubicons, but I know that if you get a Mojave, it comes standard. If you get a JL392, it comes standard. If you get a JL Extreme Recon, it comes standard. So they are available. So I will be looking online and maybe I can pick some up for cheap on like, uh, one of those websites like uh, Rock Auto or something like that. Because uh, for Mopar, they ain't cheap. They're like $900 original price. I think I can pick them up for like 700 bucks a piece. I'm not looking to spend another $1,400 on the damn front end when I know nothing's actually wrong. I would love it to not make any noises. That would be marvelous. <laughs> but uh, that's, I guess, a pipe dream at this point. I need to get the knuckles. And it is kind of a pain in the ass. And I know the comments are gonna be like, oh, this is why you shouldn't buy a new Jeep. Get rid of the new Jeep. I still love this thing. At the end of the day, it's a great vehicle. If it has some design flaws, it has some design flaws. Everybody tries to cut corners these days. So they wanted to use aluminum to save some weight and save some money. And look where I got them. So <laughs> here we are. And Jeep has never admitted the actual issue. They'll just tell you to do like little uh, service bulletins like tighten this or tighten that. At the end of the day, if you replace your knuckle, I don't think you're going to have the issue. And if you guys have a 392 or an Extreme Recon or a Mojave, let me know if you guys have even experienced this. Because my theory is you haven't. Or if, if you guys even are watching this video, because you guys probably won't even have interest in watching this because you've never had this problem. <laughs> so yeah, that is pretty much where I'm sitting. That's pretty much where I'm at. The, no the noise is pretty much like 90% gone. It's not 100% gone, but I'm just trying to keep it real with you guys. At the end of the day, am I satisfied? No, I'm not satisfied, but I'm glad that I know everything is tight, everything is good, and everything is as it should be. So at this point, I think I'm gonna leave it until I can find some knuckles for cheap and then do those eventually. But I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm not gonna be hunting for them, trying to get them as soon as possible. If I come across them and I can get them, great. If not, well, it is what it is for now. I don't really think anything uh, bad is gonna happen or anything is gonna break. So that's pretty much it. And I think I'm gonna just keep driving it. 
And yes, I know, I look like one of the Beatles right now. I need to get a haircut. If you guys have been following the channel, you know this is the longest I have ever had my hair. And I probably won't have it this long again. So yeah, <laughs> let's go, let's enjoy the Jeeps. Let's take these things both off road and let's start actually having some fun because I think I'm up to here <laughs> with the repairs. Like I'm done, I'm finished. I think I'm ready to go and start sending it. And the weather is getting nice and warm. In gunshots over there in about a month we're gonna get the trails back open and we're definitely gonna be sending it on the actual rock crawling trails so it's gonna be a hell of a good time and there's gonna be a lot of uh, mishaps <laughs> let's just say it's gonna be interesting so definitely hope to see you guys with me definitely hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did enjoy today's video jump down there hit that subscribe button hit that like button it really helps the channel out as you guys can see we are still a small channel and I am still growing so I would really appreciate it if you guys shared liked and subscribed but hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one and until then guys ride safe out there peace oh yeah because that's exactly what I want next to my brand new Jeep Sweet.